Have you ever wondered if criminals are somehow less evolved? Believe it or not, there was a time when society thought that criminal behavior was written in our DNA. Today, we're diving into a theory that shaped the way we think about crime for decades and why it's completely wrong. Throughout history, people have tried to explain why some individuals commit crimes. One of the earliest and most controversial explanations comes from Cesare Lombroso, an Italian criminologist from the late 19th century. He proposed that criminals are born, not made, and that they carry physical traits of our less evolved ancestors. But what was the basis of this theory? And how did it shape the way we understand crime? You don't need a degree in criminology to follow along. All you need is an open mind and a curiosity about how science and society have influenced each other. By the end of this video, you'll see how outdated views on crime still affect our thinking today and why it's so important to challenge them. Lombroso's theory, known as the atavistic theory, first appeared in his 1876 book, The Criminal Man. In it, he argued that certain people are born criminals, meaning they're biologically predisposed to break the law. And how could you identify them? According to Lombroso, they possessed specific physical features or stigmata that were throwbacks to earlier stages of human evolution. Think heavy brows, large jaws, or unusually long arms. To Lombroso, these traits signaled that these individuals were less evolved, primitive, even subhuman. He believed that these people represented an atavism, a regression to a more primitive form of human life. Lombroso saw this as scientific proof that criminality was inherited and that born criminals were biologically different from normal people. In fact, he even suggested that these individuals could be the missing link between modern humans and our evolutionary past. For Lombroso, the only solution to reducing crime was focusing on these born criminals, as if they were a threat to society's advancement. Lombroso's theory gained widespread attention, in part because it seemed to offer a simple explanation. Crime was not a product of one's environment, but of biology. Here, you can see some of the facial features that Lombroso claimed were signs of criminality. However, his ideas were deeply flawed and today they're recognized as scientifically inaccurate. So, how do we avoid falling into the trap of outdated theories like Lombroso's? First, it's important to remember that modern criminology looks at crime through a social and psychological lens, not just biology. Factors like poverty, trauma, and mental health are far more predictive of criminal behavior than physical appearance. One common misconception is that criminal behavior is easy to spot, that you can tell if someone is a criminal just by looking at them. But science has shown us that crime is far more complex. There's no such thing as a criminal look, and relying on outdated beliefs only creates more harm. Lombroso's atavistic theory might seem shocking today, but it reflects how our understanding of crime has evolved. Crime is not about physical traits, it's about societal and psychological factors. The more we challenge outdated ideas, the closer we get to understanding the true causes of crime. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think society still holds on to some of these outdated ideas? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like and subscribe for more discussions on crime, psychology and criminology.